Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So first off, you might have noticed the, the microphone is now in view. The reason for that is, is I went ahead and got an arm for my microphone, so hopefully that will help out audio quality. So please excuse the microphone being there, but I just want to go ahead and deliver a better experience for you guys. So in the aftermath of RX Vega's release, there have been tons and tons of articles all over the place talking about the performance, it's good, it's bad, it's okay, it's, it's not great, it's terrible. It, it pretty much goes from every range of the spectrum. But at the end of the day, what's really, really bugging people is underneath the surface, and a lot of people really aren't talking about it. And that's the reason why I'm holding this card. This is a 4 megabyte 3DFX Voodoo One 3D Accelerator card. Now, back in the day when this card came out, Basically, everything was run by the CPU. Now, there were graphics cards at the time, but they were just designed to go ahead and deliver two-dimensional performance. And honestly, it was enough for the time. But once things like Doom started coming out, and especially by the time Quake came out, it was time to push things a little bit further. And 3DFX was pretty much heralded as the first manufacturer of a 3D accelerated card. Now, there were other cards out at the time, but this one performed the best. If you search the internet, that's pretty much the consensus around, around that this card was the best 3D gaming experience that you could get back in 1996. So the reason why I'm bringing up this graphics card is because it doesn't even accelerate 2D. It only accelerates 3D. I don't know if you can see on here, but that's the reason why you have a VGA pass-through. It, the only function of this card is to help accelerate 3D in games. Now, that's kind of where video cards and graphics cards started. That was the whole function of graphics cards way back when. They started off just being out there to accelerate 3D. So, how does this relate to today? Why does this relate to Vega? And it's really hard, especially for older gamers. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you've noticed I've been putting out videos and I'll go into certain subjects and uh, honestly like it takes a while for me to wrap my head around certain things because the market is changing so rapidly that you know it, it's not the same market that it was even 10 years ago and this was really exemplified the other day with news from AMD I woke up the other morning and I read this article on Tech Power Up AMD is releasing a driver that is specifically designed for blockchain workloads Okay, so this pretty much only helps miners. Now, as a gamer, we don't want miners buying up all the GPUs. That pushes prices up. That's just not good. You can't get the graphics cards that you want to. And they went ahead and suspect that it pumps it up around 15, 10 to 15%, which, yeah, okay, that's not too shabby. Now, this was pretty much the final piece of information that I needed to pretty much verify the conclusion that I came up to into this video. Actually, it's a fear that I had in that video. And that is that graphics cards, GPUs, are no longer for gamers. Now, they started off that way. That's where they, you know, the Voodoo one right here, that was the main function of 3D Accelerator's graphics cards as they're known today. But now they are compute cards first. Plain and simple, that's what they're built for. See, unlike NVIDIA, who have the money and resources to go ahead and build a, a GP100, a GP102, a GP104, a GP106, a GP107, and they can cover the wide range of all kinds of use cases, AMD does not have those resources. They had to go ahead and put out Vega, which is a compute card first, and then they just basically scaled it down to fit the consumer-grade market, basically just by stripping off some HBM. But make no mistake that the MI25 server grade GPU, that's their main focus, then their workstation GPUs, then the Vega FE, and then RX Vega is all the way at the bottom. And the reason for this is very simple. The mainstream gaming GPUs are not nearly as profitable as the high-end compute cards. Now, that's a market that AMD really hasn't targeted before. They're stepping into that arena. This is something that NVIDIA which in that particular video, I demonstrated that that's the largest growing market of their business, and it is also the highest margin market of their business. So for AMD to just ignore this particular market would be silly. That's a lot of money that they are not drawing in. 
Now, with the mining-specific drivers, we all know Vega needs some serious love, especially on the driver's side. So, to me, when they're updating drivers only to help out with the hash rates, basically, that lets me know that AMD is paying attention to the mining market and they want to cater to it. And there's really nothing wrong with that. When you take a step back and you take your gamer hat off and you look at it from a business perspective, it makes a lot of sense for AMD to cater to the market that wants to pay them more money for the same GPUs. Now, if you look at how much like RX 580s are selling for on the market today, they're selling for about $400, somewhere in that neighborhood. And if you look at the GTX 1070, it's kind of in the same, same sort of boat. It's pushed up a little bit more, but $450, $500. Now, if you look at the raw compute of those two cards, they're relatively similar. The RX 580 is about six teraflops, and the uh, GTX 1070 is, you know, six and a half teraflops. So they're very, very similar as far as pure compute com performance goes. So AMD can sell their Radeon graphics cards to miners and to businesses, basically based upon the compute performance, not on their actual gaming performance, which as we've seen with uh, RX Vega, it's, it's inconsistent. It's all over the place. Some games it does very well. Look at Battlefield 1. It does great here. But then you look at Sniper Elite 4, and the RX Vega 56 is being beaten by the much slower and much older Fury X graphics cards. Now, the reason why this is upsetting people is because if we go back in time, I also did a video on this. You can check it out. Links will be in the description below. But if we look at the first time Vega was basically shown to the public, it was shown off at the New Horizon event back in December. And there they were showing it off playing Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefront, excuse me, uh, at 4K. And just a few weeks later, we got the poor Volta sign. So, okay, they're also going after Volta. And at CES 2017, they were specifically showing off gaming performance with the Doom demo, and they also went into a lot of gaming-specific architecture changes. Past that, we didn't hear anything from AMD for a while, up until the Capstation and Cream event. Sorry if I butchered that name, it's just kind of an odd name there. And in that particular event, they did show off the Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided demo, running with only 2 gigabytes of VRAM, but that was about it. So they were showing off their high memory bandwidth controller with that particular demo. They weren't really showing off gaming performance. And the rest of that event is purely about game developers and creators out there and that type of performance that Vega would be bringing to them. Now, what happened in between there? The big thing that happened was the GTX 1080 Ti released in March of 2017. And this is really what kind of confused us as a market is AMD started off targeting gamers. That's where RX Vega started off. That's what they were shooting for. Hey, it's going to be awesome. You know, you've got Ryzen, you have Vega, and that's your gaming rig. And then they tried to shift away from that. And I guess it's us. It was our fault for kind of sticking with that. But they're the ones that pretty much started forcing that out there. That was their marketing. Now... GP102 should not have been an unknown quantity. The Titan XP, or the Titan X Pascal rather, came out in August of last year. And it should have been well known that GP102 would have been powering the, or would be powering the GTX 1080 Ti. So the performance that was there should not have been just some surprise to AMD. They should have known that that was what they were needing to compete against. They would need to be faster than that particular piece of technology in gaming. And I think that's what they realized, and that's why they tried to shift focus from gaming to productivity. This is also the reason why they really put a lot of focus on at CES. They pretty much just talked about the uh, Frontier Edition. Sorry, I keep wanting to call it Founders Edition. And they pretty much did nothing when it came to gaming. All they did was show off a little blip of Prey, and that was about it. And honestly, they, they just tried to distance the gaming portion, and they really wanted to demonstrate what Vega is good at, and that is Compute, that's Blender Rendering, that's Adobe Premiere type stuff. You know, professional grade applications, Compute, not the gaming performance. And like I said, from their perspective, this makes a lot of sense because that's where they're going to make more money. It's just like Ryzen. Ryzen's good for gaming. It's perfectly fine. Most people are happy with, you know, more than 60 frames per second at a minimum. And whatever else happens, happens. And Ryzen will deliver that. But let's be realistic. 
that CPU and that architecture is designed to go for servers, workstations, and then high enthusiast desktops. And then all the way at the bottom, you have us, your gamers and general consumers, which it's more than enough for any general consumer. However, they're more than likely to get an APU anyway. So it's pretty much just for gamers and light productivity, something like this channel. I use the uh, Ryzen 7 1700 and it works just fine. But that's where the architecture is really designed. That's where the big money is. And compute is really where the money is when it comes to making graphics cards. Accelerating games is all well and good, and that is the history of video cards. But it's clear to see that that is no longer where things are going. That's not the primary focus. And that leads me to the second bit of news that came out this week that I found interesting. And that was Nvidia coming out saying that Volta will not be coming to gaming GPUs in the foreseeable future. Now there are several reasons for this, but if we see what they said, the price of Volta is driven by the fact that, of course, the manufacturing cost is quite extraordinary. Now, with their special 12 nanometer process, this will make Volta much more expensive to produce than the current 16 nanometer process that's obviously been out for a while and it's far more mature. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense from their perspective. They don't want to invest that much money into replacing their gaming GPUs with much more expensive GPUs that honestly, from what we've seen from Volta, isn't going to be that much faster when you look at core for core and clock for clock. Clock speeds on the V100 are actually lower than they are on the P100, so they have to make much bigger chips to compete. And obviously, Vega is not a threat to the 1080 Ti, so there's simply no reason for them to bring out Volta today. However, when we went over Vega a few days ago, I mentioned that Volta is looming. And that's absolutely true. At any given time, NVIDIA could release Volta if they wanted to. But like I said, the manufacturing cost of the 12 nanometer process would be a lot higher, yields would be lower, and obviously prices would have to be much higher. And honestly, I don't know how much better the performance would honestly be. But this is another indicator of where the market is. The latest and greatest technology from NVIDIA is now solely in the hands of the professional market. Now this is the type of thing that we see from CPU manufacturers. This is the way that's always been. Server CPUs generally are the cream of the crop, just you know, astronomically more expensive than what we have at the mainstream and infinitely more powerful. But when it comes to GPUs, and I keep bringing this up, this is just simply not something that we are used to. We are used to the market being designed for gamers. Now, if we look at the market as a whole, CPUs have always been business first. Motherboards basically are neutral. RAM, just neutral. I mean, RAM is RAM, cases are cases, power supplies are power supplies. You know, companies will slap a gaming moniker or make it look gaming by throwing LEDs on it. But I mean, for the most part, those are just computer parts. Those have always been around and, you know, they might change in look, style, and design a little bit but they're just general parts. But graphics cards have always typically been a gaming part. That's what gamers really looked at in the past. And sadly, this just is no longer the case. We as gamers are just not that important. As I said earlier, an RX 580 to me is basically worth the same amount as it is to you guys. Somewhere around 200, maybe $250, because that's the performance level that it has comparatively to the other GPUs on the market at similar price points. But that same GPU with its six teraflops of performance is much more powerful than the similarly priced GPUs from their competitor. So to people that need the raw compute performance, that GPU is worth a crap ton more money than it is to me or you. So that's basically where things are getting muddled, is gamers, the value to gamers on certain GPUs and GPU products are not worth quite as much as they are to other people. And this is why we're starting to see prices rise across the board. Yes, mining's one of them and supply and demand. Yes, th that's a thing. But with like the Founders Edition from NVIDIA, they're pushing prices up. And as you guys can see, the same thing's happening with the AMD Vega. Okay, so the only one that's in stock on Newegg right now is the Vega 64 at $689. Yes, it comes with two games, but you're looking at, okay, well, you add the shipping in there, you're basically looking at $700. But your 499 GPU is now $599. And honestly, the reason for this is to 
a lot of people out there, that graphics card is worth $599 or $699. Because if you look at the specs side by side, you can clearly see that Vega is not meant to be a GP104 competitor. It's meant to be a GP102 or a GP100 competitor. You have 12.5 billion transistors, and on GP102, you have 12 billion transistors. Teraflop for Teraflop, they're very, very similar. However, if you're in the market for pure compute, you can get the same level of compute performance from AMD for $599 versus $6 or $799 on the GP102 on the GTX 1080 Ti. Even with that $100 price increase, that GPU is still $100 less and will give the, basically the same performance. So unfortunately, that's the reality we now live in. Graphics cards are not really for graphics. Graphics cards are for compute. Gaming is kind of being pushed to the side, and there are some decent reasons for that, and I'm going to go over that in a future video in the not-too-distant future. And honestly, as a general consumer, the performance level of the GPUs that we have now are actually very sufficient. The problem is, is that prices are going to start rising because the demand for compute and compute devices is going up. And as gamers, we've basically become accustomed to a certain price scheme that's pretty much been around for ever, you know, for the last 15, 20 years. And yeah, it's crept up a little bit over time and the GPUs have gotten smaller and you're paying more for them. And that's obviously bugged me if you guys have watched the channel, but it makes sense to me now why that is. There are simply other people out there that are willing to spend more money on the same GPUs than I am or you are. So why would these companies want to sell them to me for half the price that guy over here wants to pay for one? It doesn't make sense. It's bad business. It's a bad business decision. However, they don't want to lose the gaming market. NVIDIA and AMD both need that market because it's still lucrative. But honestly, if you have more people over here willing to spend more money on the same product, they're going to sell to those guys. And that's the reason why you don't see RX 580s available and, and GTX 1060s are pretty much sold out and 1070s are skyrocketing in price. It's because they'd rather sell to these people for more money until they go away and are satiated and have all the product that they need, then you'll see stock come back on in. But if they're not and they're never satiated and they're never satisfied, that's when the market as a whole is going to have to just kind of suck it up and go, okay, this graphics card over here may have launched at $399, but people are willing to pay 4 or $5.99 for it. In all honesty, that's what the price of it is. So emerging markets, things that really weren't around 5, 10 years ago, are really going to be a major factor in the pricing of GPUs moving forward. So as a gamer, this really sucks. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is what's going on in the market. Now, NVIDIA and AMD, they don't want to lose your business or my business. They want to earn our business. So I would say that there's going to be some sort of compromise. But with the way that the mining market's going right now, and with the way that the businesses are snatching up all the high-end GPUs once they're launched, it's going to be very rare that we're going to be able to get them as just general gamers at prices that we want. Because, honestly, other people are willing to pay more. Wouldn't you sell to somebody that wants to pay more? At the end of the day, it just makes good sense from a business perspective. Well, alrighty, guys, if you like this kind of video, if this if you found this informative, this helped you out at all, maybe understand why the market seems so scurry, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. I think that this is really important. A lot of you guys out there do get it, and I see it in the comments section, and a lot of you don't. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video. Hopefully, it makes more sense now, the reason why things cost what they cost and why people are buying things that maybe you don't think's worth it as a gamer, you know, like RX Vega, especially the RX Vega 64. To you, that might not be worth it. But for somebody who's going ahead doing maybe like Adobe Premiere Pro or me personally, uh, my video editing software, I use PowerDirector from CyberLink. It loves OpenCL. AMD is really good at OpenCL, so Vega might be really, really good for me. But that's kind of the point, is there's so many more use cases out there for video cards than just gaming. So we're no longer being tailored to as a market, and we're basically just like CPU customers. They're going to produce what they're going to produce, and, and we have to take it. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys in the next video.